to the computer, not the cloud. Uh, are we recording? Yes, we are. All right. Thank you all for attending the players meeting uh, for our second session sports. All right. We'll be doing uh, 4v4 sand volleyball as well as also our 5v5 outdoor soccer. Yes, you heard it here. We are bringing out our outdoor soccer. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, please hold your questions or put them in the chat. Uh, we'll have a section at the end for you to ask any questions, things that we missed and so forth that we didn't cover. All right. So we're just going to jump right in. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully my I feel like there's a lag here. Is it? There we go. All right. So for those I haven't had the pleasure to meet, my name is Timothy Collins. My Otter family members, they call me TC. Hey, whatever you do, just don't call me Timmy, right? Just call me Timothy, TC, or Tim. Uh, I serve this university as well as also you beautiful people as the senior coordinator of recreation. I have the privilege, but more importantly, the honor of overseeing intramural sports and sport clubs. And I'll pass it to my co-hosts. Hello, everyone. My name is Hamza, and I'm the Intramural Sports Supervisor. Yes, he is. All right, so we're going to jump right in. I think we have about 150 slides, okay? So definitely, if your videos are on, we're gonna hoping, hoping that you can last all the way to 150 slides. I'm totally joking. I would never do that to you all, not on a weekend or even weekday or a school night. Uh, so let's jump in. So our vision and mission statement, these are two things that we constantly are looking at um, while we are putting our sports together, while we're training our officials and everything as well, too. So want to make sure that you all have the opportunity uh, to know what our vision statement is. So our vision statement is real simple. The Intramural Sports Program is a team of dedicated and motivated students and staff working together to implement organized activities uh, for the students, staff, faculty, and alumni of CSUMB. We provide a number of activities each semester promoting a diverse culture in an enjoyable environment. Our mission is very simple. Our program is to establish friendships and encourage participation through organized recreation while practicing, practicing exceptional leadership, teamwork, and of course, that sportsmanship. Uh, so we're gonna talk about what all that looks like and so forth in the next couple of slides. Like I said, it's about 150 or so, totally joking, totally joking. Of course, we gotta get a shout out to our, our co-host right there, getting ready to serve in volleyball indoor. That'll be coming back in the spring. Uh, but we have five values that we pride ourselves on. We teach our and train our officials all the time uh, on these five values. It's real simple, it's respect, it's responsibility, it's integrity, it's servant leadership, but more importantly also, it's sportsmanship. So those are our five values. We pride ourselves on it, as well as also we pride our officials on it as well too. And we hope as you all are participating in our program, you will pride yourself on these values as well too while you're out there, uh, whether it's respect, responsibility, integrity, servant leadership, or more importantly, our sportsmanship. <clears throat> All right, now let's jump into the fun stuff, the leagues, right? So like I said, we are having our 5v5 outdoor soccer league. Uh, that'll be from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So all of our games will be, uh, uh, that is the time allotment that we have. So from 1 to 5 o'clock or 5 p.m., uh, the games will be running on the half hours, right? We're trying to cram as much soccer as we can uh, into that 1 to 5 o'clock slot. So uh, the games will be running from 1 to 1.30, 1.30 to 2, et cetera, all the way through. Uh, the location is that recreation field, that beautiful, beautiful, field behind the north quad it's fenced in uh so it keeps all the trespassers out and so forth uh but not our four-legged uh friends raccoons and so forth they still find a way to get in there but not while we're playing so it's okay uh regular season we go live this sunday october 24th uh we go live and our regular season will go all the way to november 7th so we're doing three quick quick weeks of regular season and then after that we're going to jump into some playoffs and championships that will most likely happen on um, uh, starting on November 14th. And depending on how many teams make it to playoffs and so forth, uh, we might have to extend that and go the week after or the second week after that, which would be the Sunday following uh, Thanksgiving weekend. So we'll share that information as we get closer into November and so forth. Uh, and with day of play, we play every Sunday. So your game will be played every Sunday for the next three Sundays. And then we'll jump in to that playoffs and championships on that fourth Sunday. And then sliding over to the other side, our 4v4 sand volleyball. So once again, that time slot is 1 to 5. Me and Hobbs, we truly believe that we found something real here on Fridays and Sundays, 1 to 5 p.m. So uh, we're going to stick with it. Uh, the sand volleyball court, for those who haven't had the pleasure, or not the pleasure, but who haven't seen the sand volleyball court, that's located in that north quad. Uh, it's our newly orange building. So there used to be only one orange building on here. That used to be the uh, Alumni Visitor Center. Uh, but now, thanks to campus, we have some more 
Power Range buildings. Got to get excited about that. Our regular season for our 4 before Sand Volleyball will be October 29th. So, yes, next Friday we go live with our Sand Volleyball. Uh, that will play once again three straight weeks, ending on November 12th. Uh, the day of play will be every Friday. All right. So, hopefully, we see you out there. Uh, and we hope to wrap up Sand Volleyball by November 19th. Uh, we believe in Sand Volleyball. You could play double headers, maybe even triple headers, as some of our teams have played in grass volleyball. But outdoor soccer might be a little different. So, we're, that's why we, we might extend our playoffs and championships. Just want to make sure you all are aware about that. Uh, but our Sand Volleyball, uh, most likely, will go ahead and uh, wrap up playoffs and championship on that November 19th, right before Thanksgiving. Sand Volleyball. So let's talk about some of the quick rules. Uh, majority of our rules are hosted on uh, MyRAF, our recreation page, or in our IM Leagues. We'll just have a section where we talk about IM Leagues and so forth, and we can show you where all of our rules uh, reside and so forth in our handbook and manuals. Uh, but here are some simple, quick rules we want to make sure you all are aware. Games will be played the best of three sets, all right? Uh, the games will be played within 25 minutes. Like I said, we're doing 30-minute intervals for Sand Volleyball as well as also uh, outdoor soccer to try to maximize as many teams as we can. Uh, teams Teams must arrive 10 minutes before their game uh, to do their check-in protocol as well as also to complete their COVID-19 protocol. Uh, once again, we need to make sure that we are doing our due diligence on uh, requiring all of our our uh, um, all of our uh, participants uh, to, to abide by our COVID-19 protocols and so forth. So that's why we're asking you all to arrive 10 minutes early, as well as also too, if the court or field is available and it's open and so forth, then you absolutely have the opportunity to kind of get a quick warm up in with your team. Uh, we'll be playing, uh, once again, so the best of the set, the best of three sets. So set one and two, we played up to 15 with a cap at 20. And then set number three, we played up to 11 capped at 15. So just make sure you're aware. Please let your teammates know and so forth. <clears throat> and then also, of course, for sand volleyball, the minimum to start a match is two players. So once again, it's four on four. Uh, but for whatever reason, if your team can only get two players out there, that's OK. Uh, we'll be able to start that game as soon as your third and fourth uh, member joins uh, or arrives to the to the site. We'll get them checked in, get them to go through their COVID-19 protocol, and we will get them into that match. So that's our quick sand volleyball rules. Our outdoor soccer rules are real simple as well. We're doing games. Games will be played the two 10-minute halves with a two-minute halftime. But once again, if Team A and Team B are ready to play after 30 seconds of chugging water, we're going to get that game started. We are in a tight window. Once again, we have 30 minutes or so to complete each game and get ready for the next one. Uh, so once again, it says two minutes, but if both teams are ready to jump back in, we will do so. Um, our games will be played within 25 minutes. Like I said, try to go ahead and cap that in 20 25 to give a, the next team an opportunity to do a quick warm up and then get the uh, officials on the field and get the game going. So once again, we're still asking our teams uh, to arrive 10 minutes before their game to check in, but also more importantly, to also complete the COVID-19 protocol. And with outdoor soccer, since it's five on five, we're requiring that you have a minimum of three players to start the match. Yes, I know for those who want to start the match with two, with the goalie and one person, <laughs> unfortunately, we're not going to do that. We definitely believe in enhancing your outdoor experience in their real sports and we don't think that will do it two against five uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with three players so if you have three players we'll be able to start the match and once again like in sand volleyball if those two other individuals arrive uh, to the to the rec field uh, still during your game time we will go ahead and allow them to participate Location. So once again, Sand Volleyball is located inside of our uh, uh, North Quad area. So that red circle right there is indicating where our, our Sand Volleyball court is. And so once again, it's inside and located inside that North Quad dorms. Uh, that recreation field. So the North Quad dorms are right here, down here, right? If you just go ahead and turn around and look over to that abandoned parking lot, you will see our beautiful recreation field over there, gated and so forth. Just go ahead and walk all the Way across that abandoned parking lot, Hamza and myself will be smiling there with our officials ready to go ahead and get some games started. Um, so that is the location for our recreation field for those who haven't seen our recreation field, which it's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's all right. It's our field and we love it. Um, so that's our location for our recreation field. Once again, located behind the North Quad dorms. Um, um, and I do want to go ahead and make sure I state this. Um, so at any given time, one once any given time, recreation is hosting uh, activities, whether it's a sand volleyball uh, or a sand volleyball or five v five soccer. I know that location is is primarily par par at least the parking area behind North Quad is kind of reserved for North Quad dorms, unless there is programming and activities over there. So for those of you who are traveling uh, to our locations and so forth. Um, 
whether it be for sand volleyball or for uh, outdoor soccer, um, you as long as you have your valid parking pass, uh, you'll be able to park over there. So we've already reached out to our parking services. They are aware uh, they have access to our calendar so they can see when we have our activities out there. Uh, so just want to make sure I stated that. Oh, my gosh. You can't forget this. What do I win? <laughs> what do I get when we win, right? When we go ahead and uh, annihilate everyone in our, our, our division or bracket. We're getting t-shirts. So we have shirts that we give out uh, for all of our, our champions. Um, so basically the amount of t-shirts we give out is double the amount that can start the game, or I'm sorry, that can play the game. So and for example, Sand Volleyball is 44. That means you have a total of eight people that could be on your max uh, roster, uh, which means eight individuals. <clears throat> would be able to um would be able to receive a champion shirt now once again i will say this and we're recording so it's it's live and we have it forever um but your participants your members they need to participate and play in two games it's a short short season three regular season games and then we jump right into playoffs so if they would like to participate in playoffs they must once again they must participate in two games minimum two games so please make sure all your participants all your team players are aware of that if they if you your team is so lucky to make it to playoffs, uh, we will be looking and tracking everyone's uh, participation. For those individuals who have below two, unfortunately, they can be a spectator uh, for that championship or playoff game, uh, but unfortunately, they will not be able to participate. So please, please, please make sure your participants are aware of that. And of course, winning always looks good on me. I don't know about you, but it definitely looks good on me. So that's our championship shirt. Uh, we like to pride ourselves on sportsmanship. Like I said, that's one of our values. So what I always encourage our teams, don't really need to, you know, get into the whole um, trash talking and so forth and whatnot. Just win the championship and the shirt will do all the talking. So we pride ourselves on that. We take pride on our championship shirt. So uh, we hopefully you all like them and so forth. Uh, some of our grass volleyball, as well as also our spike ball champs are definitely loving their shirts as well, too. So hopefully you'll be able to see them uh, maybe out there uh, playing in one of these sports or just around, uh, around the quad area. <clears throat> Oh, traditional leagues. We are back, baby. Yes. So spring semester, I don't know if you've all heard about it, but spring semester, we are going back to live. Everyone is back on campus is what the word we're hearing. So 5v5 basketball indoors is coming back. Our 4v4 flag football will be coming back, as well as also our 6-on-6, six 6v6 six, six six indoor volleyball, and of course, our 5v5 indoor soccer. If you Yes, if you are wondering why are we doing a lot of indoor sports, well, because our weather is kind of risky. Okay, all right, in the spring semester. So that's why we're definitely doing a lot of indoor sports. Um, but we definitely have our flag football out there for those who are really eager to get out there and throw the flag or throw the football around. Um, so we will be back. Our traditional leagues and so forth will be back in the spring semester. So please get excited. I know we're excited uh, to go ahead and get those sports uh, back to you all. So uh, once again, please be on the lookout. We'll be doing majority of our, our marketing and so forth and advertisement uh, still through my RAF. Um, and uh, and around campus. So please, please, please let all your participants and team members know that we'll be bringing our traditional leagues back uh, in the spring semester. <clears throat> All right, the fun stuff, eligibility and registration. So let's just jump right in, right? So eligibility, it's free for all CSUMB students, staff, faculty, and also, of course, the alumni. Now, that doesn't happen at all programs, but we love to go ahead and allow our alumni to come on back and participate in our programs. Uh, so if you do have uh, some uh, friends who graduated from CSUMB and so forth, please reach out to me uh, so we can go ahead and make sure they fill out the, prop the appropriate paperwork um, so that we can go ahead and get them um, participating. Um, so if you have some individuals who are on your team that are alumni or are interested in participating and they are alumni, like I said, reach out to me at tcollins at csumb.edu. Uh, we can go ahead and make sure they have an opportunity to participate this year. Uh, every student must, once again, must check in with their Otter ID. So if you do not have your Otter ID uh, when you come to the check-in table for whether it's uh, sand volleyball or it's outdoor soccer, we will allow you to use your driver license, but that's only for once though, okay? So you'll only be able to use that once. So please, please, please make sure you go ahead and bring that Otter ID um, so you can check into that game. We wanna make sure we don't have any ringers out there. Um, I know my man uh, Hams over there knows Messi and I know Messi is talking about trying to come play in our league and we can't have that happen, okay? Um, I don't want him to 
lose to any of y'all. You know how it is. Um, so definitely we want to make sure we have no ringers out there, right? So uh, on then last but not least, all participants uh, can only play on one sand volleyball and soccer team. Now, for example, when we bring some of our traditional sports back, some of our leagues, our traditional leagues have uh, co-rec options or co-rec divisions, open divisions, men and women divisions. So in those cases, you'll be able to play multiple, uh, you'll be able to play on multiple teams in those divisions. But since our sand volleyball and soccer leagues are <clears throat> are open, meaning that there's no real requirement of how many males or females you need to have on your team. Um, so, um, uh, so that's the reason why we're only allowing one, uh, you're only able to be on one sand volleyball team as well as also soccer team. And that's our eligibility registration. You've all seen this. This is our registration page. Um, so it's just to kind of let us know you're interested in getting started and participating in intramural sports. Um, so all of our events will be posted on to MyRAF. Uh, every every uh, game, you'll be asked to check in to the actual game. This uh, helps with our contract tracing. Our friends and family over in health and wellness, we, make sure, we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and we're uh, doing everything that we need to do uh, to make sure we're keeping our campus safe. So we are requiring that every participant goes ahead and scans that QR code when they arrive to the uh, sand volleyball court or they arrive to the recreation field um, so that we have um, uh, knowledge of those students that were there at that game. Heaven forbid something breaks out, COVID-19 case breaks out and so forth. We want to make sure that we can uh, inform those individuals that were there. So that's the reason why we'll be doing that. They'll be asked to do that every game. Um, so those who are doing sand volleyball and those who, I'm sorry, grass volleyball, as well as also um, spike ball, yes, you're going to have to do the same thing uh, for these two sports as well, too. <clears throat> So after you do that registration on uh, on my raft, you should have received an email saying thank you for doing the registration part one. Registration part two is going over to IM Leagues and actually joining on to IM Leagues. So like I said, you're going to want to log into IM Leagues. There should have been a link that was inside of that email that has a video to show you how exactly to go ahead and um, uh, to log in to IM League, create an account, as well as also start, uh, sign up for um, a specific league and so forth, or even add members. So we have a tutorial video um, that we've sent to you, everyone who's registered. We also will be showing that video as well here um, so you all can see it and probably follow along if you have an open tab or another um, computer nearby or on your phone. <clears throat> So IM Leagues is one of our platforms we use. Uh, we have that for scheduling and rankings and so forth. So uh, we definitely want to make sure that you have an opportunity to check into our IM Leagues. Actually, did up. Oh, um, show you on the next slide, I guess. Uh, there was an opportunity where we'll show you where the handbooks and manuals and so forth like that live. Um, but our COVID-19, so let's talk about COVID-19. Uh, so our COVID regulations, all participants must be fully vaccinated or have an exemption, right? Whether it's medical or religious. Um, and please make sure you are all complying to our auto vaccination registry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, all participants must complete a daily self COVID-19 screening before each event. Yes, 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 we understand that this is very tedious and so forth then could be taxing and whatnot but unfortunately we have to do what we have to do to continue to play what we love to play uh so please go ahead have patience with us and so forth uh, but as soon as you arrive to the to the site uh we'll have you scan into the event we'll ask your id so that we can check you into the event or as, as in our game sheet um and then we'll have you scan that uh daily self COVID 19 and please be honest on there once again it's going to ask you if you're feeling any of these symptoms in the past two to 14 days if you answer yes that's totally fine we really appreciate that honesty. But we're just going to ask you to go ahead and take care of yourself. Uh, if you're feeling any more kind of uh, your symptoms getting any type of worse, uh, then definitely go ahead and uh, travel over to the Outer Student Union and go to the testing center. Um, and then once again, once you get that negative test result, you're coming back to open hands, open arms, and uh, we're excited for you to go back into participating. Uh, but we want to make sure that everyone fills out that daily self screening uh, on the, um, the daily self COVID 19 screening uh, before each of that. <clears throat> And then also when you check in, you're going to have, once again, your student ID before the game. And then we're going to have some hand sanitizer just to go ahead and get some hand sanitizer on the house. Um, and want to make sure, once again, we're trying to do as much as we can do to keep our community safe. <clears throat> This is new, so we want to make sure we go over this. Uh, for those who participated in our, our session one sports, we didn't really kind of talk through uh, this at all. Um, so these are some things that have changed uh, since uh, last season or our last sports. So I want to make sure we go over this in depth. Um, so for those who are fully vaccinated, so once again, everyone who's signing up for uh, intramural sports this uh, semester, uh, I will be taking those names and adding them to our otter vaccination registry through recreation. Uh, my partners and so forth in crime over in health and wellness will be updating that form to 
and inform me of your vaccination status. So those who are fully vaccinated, uh, those um, who are fully vaccinated will not have to test weekly. Um, so it's that simple. And you're fully vaccinated, no test weekly, show up to the game site, um, check into the game, grab some hand sanitizer on us and get ready to participate. Uh, those who are unvaccinated and exempt, right? So you have that either medical or religious. Uh, once again, you have to follow the university policy, which is basically uh, you have to test once a week. So we're asking and requiring everyone to, um, for those who are unvaccinated and exempt, must receive a negative rapid antigen test, right, before your scheduled game. So if you're playing, for example, on Friday, then definitely either Thursday or that day of Friday, you need to go to the uh, testing center over at the Otter Student Union, go ahead and get your test, rapid test, get that negative test result, and then go ahead and upload that screenshot, take a screenshot of it and upload it into that daily self COVID-19 screening. At the bottom of the daily self COVID-19 sc uh, screening, there's an, it's, uh, it's optional, it's not recommended uh, because not everyone, once again, there will be individuals who are fully vaccinated, so they don't have to upload a screenshot of that test uh, result. <clears throat> But those uh, who are unvaccinated and exempt, once again, just still just upload that uh, screenshot in there and then you'll be able to play. Uh, if not, the penalty is you can't play that day. So if you don't have your negative test either that Thursday or Friday leading into that Friday game or on that Friday before that Sunday you play, right? Because the campus is closed on Saturdays and Sunday, right? You want to make sure you have that. If you don't have that, unfortunately, you will not be able to play that week, okay? So please, please, please make sure you let all your teammates know that. They will be getting communication sent out to them <clears throat> regarding their status, um, but just make sure you follow up with them. And then also, there are some students who are in progress to becoming fully vaccinated, which is awesome, right? Perfect. Those individuals will so still follow the same uh, protocol as those who are unvaccinated exempt. So you are still required to re uh, test weekly until you become fully vaccinated. Um, so must receive a negative rapid antigen test before your scheduled game. Uh, and then once again, provide a screenshot into that daily self COVID-19 screening. If not, the penalty is you can't play. And for those individuals who are unvaccinated and still haven't complied with our auto vaccination registry, right, letting them know your status, letting the university know your status, um, there might be some individuals out there. If so, unfortunately, you can't play until you submit your proof of vaccination status to the auto vaccination registry. So uh, when we submit your names into our auto vaccination registry for the recreation side and they share with us that that, that uh, this said individual is unvaccinated um, and hasn't complied, then we'll be sending a communication that you can't play, you're not approved to play until you go ahead and submit that information to our auto vaccination registry and submit that information to our health and wellness team. So please, 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 <clears throat> if you have any members, any members at all uh, that are underneath that unvaccinated and did not comply with the auto vaccination registry, please let them know to start doing that ASAP so we can make sure that they are able to play and, um, uh, this uh, uh, Sunday and next Friday. <clears throat> Perfect. <clears throat> Daily screening form. So this is what it looks like. This will be a form that you will scan. It'll take you over to my RAF, have you log in real quick, and then you'll just answer the questions. Once again, if you feeling these symptoms, yes or no, please let us know what sports you're participating in. Um, and then once again, for those who uh, have to upload a screenshot for your negative test, uh, you'll have that section at the bottom where you can upload that screenshot <clears throat> and then we can approve you to participate that day. All right, some game rules. Let's talk about it. So our participant handbook on our website, which is once again, CSUMB backslash recreation, you click on the intramural sports side, we have a participant handbook, which goes over a lot of our details in depth. We're not going to bore you all with that. But once again, you have the opportunity. I think Hans is going to be sending that inside the chat, uh, the link of how you can get there and so forth. Um, but it definitely has all of our information on there um, uh, on, you know, um, for anything, uh, for any participants questions. Um, so please, please, please look at our handbook. Um, all participants must read uh, through them prior to joining a league. So please do that and so forth. There is a quiz. No, I'm joking. Definitely not a quiz. We trust you all. Just go ahead and take a gander and take a look at it. Um, we'd really appreciate that. <clears throat> Our rules, like I said earlier, so we house our rules in two sections, right? On my RAF, on our recreation page, under documents, you click on intramural sports rules, you'll find all of our rules that were host are for the sports that we're doing in the fall semester. Uh, so grass volleyball is up there, spike ball up there, sand, uh, sand volleyball, as well as also outdoor soccer should all be up there. So please, please, please let us know if you have any questions about our rules um, or you can't find our rules, just let us know. But that's where our rules are housed. 
inclement weather, we got to talk about it, right? Because both of our sports are outdoors. So if there is inclement weather, we will send out communication on Friday for soccer and uh, Thursday for sand volleyball, right? So once again, since soccer is playing on, fr- on Sundays, we'll try to let you all know by Friday if we see that it's been raining the entire weekend or whatnot, we're going to go ahead and call those games and hopefully be able to make up those games. Uh, same thing for sand volleyball. We'll try to let you know Thursday before that Friday so we can plan accordingly. All right, imleagues.com. I think we got about 50 more slides. So hang in with me. I'm going through these as fast as I can. Uh, so as you get to the homepage of, of our IM Leagues, like I said, on this left-hand side right over here, handbooks and manual, if you click on that, that will bring you up to, that, that will show you all of our, uh, our handbooks and manuals that we have in intramural sports. So please, by all means, definitely check that. That is another space uh, and resource for you all. Um, and then also, too, when you log into IM Leagues and so forth, they'll have leagues that you can go ahead and sign up for. Um, these are a prime, a prime example of our previous leagues that we did um, <clears throat> in the month of October, September, October, which is our spike ball and grass volleyball. So if you haven't created your team yet or you haven't signed up for an uh, as a free agent, please, 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 you can do that. Start working on that now or you can do that after this meeting and so forth. Uh, we want to make sure everyone is aware that registration for all of our leagues ends today, tonight. Uh, so for those who are teams and so forth, stick after. Uh, we're going to make sure that we give you credit for checking in uh, to this or to this players meeting so we can go ahead and approve your team um, and we can put your team into the schedules. Uh, we will be having all of our schedules uh, launched by Friday. Um, so for uh, soccer, making sure that everyone's aware uh, your soccer schedule will be ready by Friday, uh, as well as also sand volleyball will be ready by Friday as well, too. Uh, the only hiccup in the schedules being uh, ready by Friday is that if our, our leagues are uneven, right? So if we have a seven or a nine, um, or nine teams in any of our leagues, we will try to hold off just to try to get another team so that we can have it even. Um, we love even numbers in, in real sports. It definitely makes it easier when we're looking at playoffs as well as also, uh, or yeah, definitely looking at playoffs. Uh, so also on IM leagues, like we said earlier, it has uh, the rankings and so forth. So uh, like I said earlier, some of our leagues had competitive league and whatnot. So you'll see uh, competitive league and those have the rankings and so forth. F and D stands for forfeit and default. A forfeit is basically you just didn't tell us that you're coming, that you weren't showing up and so forth. So do forfeit. And once again, a forfeit will bring down your sportship rating. You have to have a 2.0 sportship rating uh, or higher to make it to playoffs. So please try not to forfeit. A default is given us a heads up you let us know within 12 hours before your event minimum right that you weren't going to be your team wasn't going to be able to make it we'll give you a default and two defaults equal one forfeit okay but once again it's a three it's only three weeks so you definitely don't want to default as many times or more than once right so um and then they'll talk about points average and then that's and once again that sr is that sportship rating we say it, it's real simple we tell all our officials to tell all team captains in the captain's meeting before a game starts you are starting off with a four sportship rating right depending on how you and your team handle yourselves uh, while you're participating and so forth, communicating to officials or even communicating to other teams and whatnot while you're out there, those things, right, will keep you at a four. Doing things against that will drop your grade down uh, to a three, a two, a one, or heaven forbid, a zero. So please make sure you all are, uh, you know, practicing uh, ex- uh, excellent sportsmanship out there. Uh, and then once again, this will show you the schedule. So for if you're clicked onto your team, we'll have your roster up here as well too. And it'll uh, notify or indicate who's the captain of your team as well, too. This section, you can add announcements to any one of your team. So you just add announcements or team chat. You can chat with your squad. Hey, team, let's all meet at the main quad to go over some plays for, you know, soccer or for sand volleyball, right? <clears throat> Uh, and then it will have your schedule right here, win loss and so forth and whatnot. Um, um, and we, we being Hamza, myself and, and our intramural sports staff, we try to update as soon as those games are over. We try to update that so you all are aware of uh, the schedule and rankings. <clears throat> All right. I think that is it for our Iron Leagues portion. Uh, we have a pretty, pretty nifty video that we want to show. Um, and I want to make sure that you all can hear the volume. So let me go ahead and make sure that works as well, too. Perfect. All right, so we're going to play this video. I think it's about 10 minutes or so. So go ahead and grab a snack. I'm joking. It's about two and a half. Here we go. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Andrew Rodriguez. I'm an intramural sports supervisor here at Cal State Monterey Bay. And today we're going to show you how to navigate and register through IM Leaks. So first, you want to make sure you are going to the correct website, which is just imleaks.com. It'll send you here. You want to go ahead and click sign up. 
once you get to this page, you want to make sure you're selecting the correct school. Scroll on down to Cal State Monterey Bay. Then it'll ask you to go ahead and input some personal information. We'll go ahead and give you a quick example right here. So then you want to go ahead and uh, click create account. After you do that, it'll tell you that you'll be sent an email to your csumb.edu email. And after you go ahead and go through all that, this is what your IM League's profile should look like. So if you go here, Intramurals is now free for all faculty, staff, and students, including alumni. Scroll on down, it'll show you all the sports that we'll be offering for the fall semester. So whatever sport you would like to play, so if you'd like to play dodgeball, go ahead and click open. All of our description will be right here. Scroll on down. You can choose to create a team or join as a free agent. It has both of our uh, leagues and divisions here. So we'll go ahead and show you how to uh, create a team real quick. So you come on over here, make sure that you are reading and signing the waiver. You have an option to create a team name. We'll go ahead and put the otters. You have an option to, to select a team logo. Scrolling down to options and it'll tell you if you'd like to auto accept members or not and if you are looking for free agents or not. It'll go ahead and ask you to put in some contact info right here. Go ahead and click create a team. And there you go. After you do that, then you're open to invite any, any of your friends or people that you like to join the, the team. And from there, you are set. Thank you. So one of the things I just want to make sure you're aware of, uh, when you, once you create your uh, account, um, and like I said in the video, they'll send you an email. Sometimes those emails get sent to your spam section. So please make sure you check your spam as well, too. Uh, we're still working with CSUMB to go ahead after six years. So trying to go ahead and uh, get that uh, uh, to jump right into your main inbox. But for whatever reason, it's still going to spam, and that's okay. Uh, but please make sure you uh, let your participants know, um, your teammates know, and so forth, um, uh, that they want to check their spam section um to make sure that uh to see if they received that email. Um, and then also the last thing on there too, that there was a section to put your phone number there. Uh, so we encourage you to put your phone number because what we'll do is we'll send out emails as well as also texts. Uh, if you don't want to put your phone number, that's okay. Uh, but we will be sending out text messages as well too uh, for those who do opt into um, opt into the text messaging, which is basically just by leaving your uh, uh, text or your phone number on there. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Andrew Rodrigo here. Intramurals. I don't know why we're doing that. That's, there we go. All right, and then last but not least, uh, our announcement. So uh, once again, since uh, Friday, uh, this Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. will be our last day of training our officials uh, for sand volleyball. We've wrapped up uh, uh, outdoor soccer this Sunday um, with our officials and this, um, and thank you, shout out to all those who were able to make it to the scrimmage, uh, definitely. Uh, it was a fun time. Uh, we'll have another uh, scrimmage opportunity for teams to come out early, kind of see how the officials are and so forth, uh, but also try to get some kind of quick practice in, in, in a, a quick practice and warm up in and so forth. So we're asking to get two to four teams who are interested in scrimmaging uh, to give our officials practice officiating. Uh, we're asking you to show up to, uh, uh, at three o'clock this Friday at the uh, sand volleyball court uh, for a scrimmage uh, for those two teams that show two to four teams that show up. We'll just go ahead and uh, have all all the equipment uh, ready for you all to go ahead and just jump into the sand and get started. Um, so please, if you're interested, let us know at the end of this meeting or just show up on Friday uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get you in there and uh, get a live scrimmage going. <clears throat> Q&A, we did it. Time check. Oh, I lost the bet to Hamza. Said I could do it in 30 minutes. Darn it. All right, <clears throat> any questions? And Hamza, if you could be checking the chat, seeing if I missed anything or missed any questions. Uh, but if you have a question, either raise your hand um, or yeah, I'll raise your hand and then we'll go ahead and call on you. Awesome, I see that hand. Javier, unmute. What's your question, sir? Hey, Javier, 
All right. So I just recently graduated last year and congratulations. Do, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And then I and then I did the MyRAF thing, but I try to log in with my CSUMB account and it doesn't let me. Yeah. You're not a member, brother. You're an alumni. Uh, yeah, so my rap didn't let you log in. That's okay. That's totally fine. I am leagues will let you log in. So just go ahead and uh, follow that video tutorial. Um, join into I am leagues and then make sure you go ahead and um, sign up on your tier team or you can go ahead and uh, uh, sign up as a free agent. Uh, and then also... No, no yeah, I'm, I'm set up there. So oh, okay. I'm set up perfect. there. Am I good? Oh, you're perfect. You're perfectly fine. Yeah, once again, my rap is just to catch everyone who's interested and participating in intramural sports, the IM leagues is where you log in as a as a participant. Yep. All right, perfect. Good question. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question, Javier. Uh who we got next, Hamza? Uh, I think we got M Mario. Mario, my man. What's up, brother? Hey, uh, so I had a few questions. Um, so I'm an alumni as well, and I never got my auto card due to COVID. So how will that work out for me? And then another one was uh, since I am an uh, alumni, do I have to still re do the registry for the COVID? Um, and then my last question was regarding parking. Since I don't have a campus permit, do I have to park in the visitor's parker, parking spot? Or how is that going to work out? Yeah, Mario, my man with the three questions. Appreciate it, brother. So I'm going to try to answer all three of them. So uh, as an alumni, uh, yes, still we'll have to go ahead and uh, follow the COVID protocols and so forth. Um, so what we'll do is at the end of this meeting, I will get your, uh, any of our alumni, uh, we'll get your email address so we can go ahead and get you um, situ or get you situated. Uh, since you are alumni, uh, what we will be doing is just asking you all to, uh, uh, to um, in the form that I send, you'll have an opportunity to go ahead and upload your um, screenshot of your uh, vaccination card. Um, and please do that as soon as possible because it's going to be a quick turnaround if we, uh, if you're playing soccer on Sunday. Uh, if you're playing volleyball on, on Friday, we'll have a little bit more time. But if you are playing um, uh, soccer, then we need to do that ASAP. Uh, so what you do, we'll just reach, uh, we'll get your email, get you logged in uh, or get you to uh, fill out that um uh, alumni form. Uh, once you fill that out, we get you approved from our health and wellness saying that your vaccination status is approved. Uh, then you'll be able to participate. And then for parking, yes, unfortunately, uh, because you don't have a parking pass, uh, you have two options, right? One, parking on Second Street and trekking right over uh, to the rec field or uh, to the sand volleyball court or um, purchasing a day pass. And you can either park in the visitor's lot or you can park over by the recreation field space as well, too, um, if you do have your parking pass. Um, um, and then there was, there was another one. Did I miss any Mario? Is that it? Oh, for the, my auto ID. Yeah. Like, auto ID. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, hmm, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, That'd be that. That's that should be okay. I think we can allow you to play uh, with your driver's license. I'll just confirm that you're alumni that you were uh, that you graduated from here, and then we can allow you to use your driver's license. Okay, right, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great questions. Who's next, Hamza? We got Jared. Jared. Jared, what's up, brother? I had a question. Are we allowed to use cleats for the so for the soccer? Absolutely not. No. Are you kidding me? I want you all out there in shoes, chunk gloves, like my wife calls them, <laughs> sandals. Uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> of course you can wear cleats. Yes, we encourage you to wear cleats. Uh, definitely don't let them be spikes. We ask for you to be plastic and molded, um, so no screw-ins. Uh, we want to definitely take care of all of our community members. But yes, absolutely. Please be spike. Uh, please, please, please wear uh, cleats. Absolutely. Um, and shin guards, you can wear those as well, too. We don't supply those. Um, um, but yes, you definitely could wear cleats and shin guards and whatnot um, while you're out there uh, playing. Yes, that field sometimes gets because of the marine layer and so forth, gets a lot of fresh dew out there. So we definitely don't want you slipping around. But yes, you can absolutely wear cleats. Good question. I'm guessing for, I'm guessing for, I have another question. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I'm guessing for, for safety, you can't, there's no, no, no things like regular soccer, like slide tackling and all that, right? Yeah, great question, Jared. No, in intramural sports, we do not allow slide tackling. So depending on the uh, discretion of the official, it's guaranteed a yellow card and it can be upgraded to a red card depending on the official discretion. So yes, great question. With 5v5, we uh, in 7v7, uh, we don't allow slide tackling. But if you are interested and you love slide tackling so much, uh, holler at Hamza. He's a part of our men's uh, soccer club. Uh, if you're a female, holler at, um, at me and I'll let you, I'll get you in, in touch with Evelyn over our, uh, in our women's soccer soccer club um, and definitely join their clubs and whatnot because they, they definitely allow slide tackling in their leagues. Um, but in intramural sports, yeah, absolutely not. No slide tackling. Great question. Thank you. Absolutely. 
We are cooking along over here. What we got? Who we got next, Hamza? I think that's all. <laughs> no way. That's it? Are you kidding me? Wow. All right. Uh, in the chat, no questions either, too? No, just, just a heads up for everyone. Uh, we have our party spin uh, handbook rules uh, link in the chat. Uh, feel free to check it out. And also we have our rules on the uh, on my rap group as well under files called uh, Intramural Sports Rules. Uh, please read them because they have certain rules. We don't follow all the international or all the national rules. Uh, we follow NERSA or NERSA rules, which are different than uh, most of the other rules um, that you see um, on the TV. Great question. Good, good, good uh, follow up right there, Hans. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Any other questions out there, whether it's uh, sand volleyball or uh, outdoor soccer? Great questions. I think we got one question. Yeah. Um, is the net currently up the one that we'll be using for the games for sand volleyball? <laughs> oh, sand volleyball. I love that beautiful net out there. Of course they're going to use that net. I love it. Huh? I, it allows me to actually spike because you know, it's so low. No, absolutely not. We're getting that thing out of here. Yeah, we purchased two brand new nets. We reached out to our facilities and services team uh, and operations to go ahead and put up new nets. Um, but once again, since we are uh, purchasing, since we did purchase new nets um, and we're going to um, ask our facilities team to put those nets up uh, this week um, so we can have them ready for next week, it's going to take all of us to keep an eye on that field or that, that sand volleyball court. Uh, so please make sure if you do notice anyone tampering with it, let us know. Um, it is because of supply and demand and everything is kind of difficult to find. Um, uh, there are only two left, so I purchased and bought both of them uh, to make sure we have a far league. Uh, but yes, great question. We will not be using that raggedy, that raggedy net. Um, no, we'll be having our facility squad put up a, a, a new net for our games. Great question. Uh, we got one question from yeah. Shelby. Um, is it half field and normal size goals for soccer? Oh. Um, I can answer that. Go on. Um, it, it is a uh, half field. It's 50 yard by 40 yard field. Um, and we're using relatively small goals, which are 12 by six feet. Um, and we have another question from Javier. Is the grass at the right field natural or artificial? Um, I think it's artificial, but it grows up on its own. <laughs> um, so look at you. That was good, brother. That was good. I like that. Um, I'm just kidding. It, it's a natural grass, so uh, but still, don't don't slide on it. Yeah, it'd be sweet if we had turf, man. Oh my gosh, Javier alumni, come on, man, get us a turf field. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Once, twice. No way. We did that good of a job. All right. Perfect. Well, we were able to capture everyone who came in here. So if you are not a free agent and you're a team, uh, thank you for stopping by and so forth and listening to um, all of our policies and procedures for intramural sports. Uh, you are free to go. Uh, we will go ahead and give you credit uh, and check your team in. Um, if you're not a, uh, a team captain or a part of a team and you're a free agent, please stick after and we'll, we'll chat about uh, free agents and how we can get you uh, onto a team. Um, but if you're a team captain or a part of a team thank you very much for being here you're free to go all right let's see i think i got another slide here there we go for yeah all right so it looks like we have oh nope the list keeps getting smaller and smaller Mario is asking, do we stay for the COVID email? Oh, um, just go ahead. If you're great question um, uh, for Mario. Yeah. If you can go ahead and just put in the chat or direct message, either myself or Hamza, your email address. I, yeah, oh. I got, I got his email. Um, oh, I, I, I texted you. So. You oh, good. sweet. Awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah. You're good, Mario. Uh, did you get Javier's too, Hamza or no? Yeah. I got okay. his too. Sweet. Awesome. All right. All right, free agents, uh, we can stop recording now. Let's do that.